Hey, it's Robert Overturf doing another video for Iowa Urban Permaculture. Uh, got a quick little tour here. Just want to run through and show the progress. It seems like week by week this stuff is just exploding, getting more diverse, more just um, just more green material popping up above the ground just in abundance. And uh, I'm going to run, run kind of through it and kind of just point out a few things. And nothing in particular. But anyways. All right, here's the first big swale out. The first one I come to as I leave my house. The, it's actually the third one that I put in. Fourth one I put in, I'm sorry. And um, over here was the first part that I dug out from this ditch up here. But then I'm getting like a ton of water that was still pulling up down this way just from what was kind of coming up from underground from all this ho uh, holding back in the swales. And so I decided to bulk up the swales a little bit. So I built out here also. And then I've kind of got a little bit of a dip right here. So it's mound, dip, mound, but I'm going to bulk all this back up again before the next season. So this is going to be quite a lot more holding capacity for water, because that's really what a swale does, is it holds water above the ground, makes it available for these plants. But anyways, here's another little part I added right here by the edge. Um, we've got some new seed stuff coming in here, so this is all going to be just planted a couple weeks ago, or a week or two ago, and then this is all fairly well established here. So I've got uh, corn and peas and bean all in the same hole in there, so I essentially got like a three sisters minus the squash, but I got squash in between them. So I'm going to kind of run the squash to do cover, and then the the, the peas also fit right in with the bean family as a legume and they'll work just the same in a three sisters mix so there's that right there I got and that, that pretty much repeats pattern all the way through this entire thing corn corn beans and squash on the new parts of the soils um, <clears throat> but anyways we run through this I've got romaine lettuce mustard greens uh, some more romaine um, I believe that's either a volunteer weed or a flower. Uh, this is a radish that went to seed, which is really cool. It gets a lot bigger than I thought. And actually, it develops little florets a lot like a cauliflower or a broccoli does. Uh, another big old. This is actually rutabaga on this one right here. So, Let's see. Uh, big old root on that. Uh, corn kind of tied in close to that. It's actually doing extremely well. This is the best corn, the one that got established well early on. and From its own seed in place, I had a couple other corns later on that I'll show that did not take so well because they were transplants. And the transplants, to, in my experience, do not do well. They just don't hold the root. Uh, part of that was because where I transplanted from, I, I had a, like a toilet paper roll that I used. So I think it directed the roots of the corn straight down where they're supposed to kind of spread out to give it stability. But anyways, uh, mixed in here I've got carrot, not very developed, gentilina lettuce underneath, over here and here, uh, kale right here. This kale is actually really good and I've never had it before until I grew it myself. Um, shard looks a lot like a spinach leaf, but spinach leaves don't quite get that big, I don't believe. Um, this is either, yeah, this is a shard also, but right beside it here is a beet. They look very similar, the difference being the shards have a smoother edge of the leaf the beets get kind of wonky wib wobbly uh, the shards a lighter color the beets are more of a dark red um, <clears throat> I have yet to see how they'll develop but we'll watch them uh, pea right here this one doesn't show any pods on it that I can see but I've got a few that do uh, spinach that's gone to seed down there romaine lettuce more mustard all right let's kind of breeze on through until I find something new here uh, more spinach going to seed, kale, this will be, I believe, a sunflower, not 100% sure on that. <clears throat> uh, you can hear my chickies in the background. This, oh, I know that, that's a cabbage. I can't wait on that, I can't wait for that one to grow. I love cabbage. Uh, looks like this mustard's starting to bolt. That's kind of good because, honestly, I got kind of sick of the mustard. It's really spicy, too spicy for my tastes. Um, it's kind of along the same flavors of a radish, but even spicier. <clears throat> um, radishes were fairly new for me, too. I had not really eaten much of them until I grew them myself. Um, but I'm coming to like them. The bigger they are, the better they are. And the uh, earlier in the day they're picked, the milder their flavor, in my experience. Um, 
I think at least that one down there on the right is a cabbage. I'm not sure what that one up there is. It could be cauliflower. It looks kind of like a broccoli with a lighter leaf. So yeah, I would say that might be a cauliflower. It's a little bit tall, and I, and I wonder if it's going to bolt. Um, <clears throat> not sure what this little fuzzy guy is. The bugs tend to like this one. Um, so I think it's a flower. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, the bugs definitely like that one. They tend to leave a lot of this other stuff alone. I mean, they'll pick a little bit on these brassicas, but not really in any kind of devastating way. Um, here's another little something fuzzy down there. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, all right, let's see. Some more spinach there that one's still edible i think when it starts to get that kind of arrowhead look to the leaves that's where it starts to not be quite as flavorful as it is when it's younger and that also is about when it's getting ready to bolt in my experience is that when it gets that that kind of jagged edge to the back of the leaf i don't know maybe that's not true because here's one that's bolted that's not got that look but <clears throat> anyway it's a learning process uh let's see here i thought i saw another there's some onions all throughout the bed. I stuck some little onion sets in here. Um, there's another flower. I'm not 100% sure what that one is. Here's some more of that little fuzzy leafed guy that the bugs tend to like. This one must be hiding a little bit better in, in amongst this stuff because they're not messing with that one too much. Uh, I have a sunflower over here. Getting quite tall. Kind of tall, I guess. Not really. About two feet. Two and a half feet. Um, radish bolting. Let's see. Also, in extending the edge of the swales, the size of them, the width. Oh, there's that sunflower I was looking for before. Uh, in extending their width, I made them four feet wide because that's kind of what you would do. That's the formula for like a square foot garden. You never want to reach in more than two feet to the center. Uh, to be able to reach your produce and stuff so I wanted to make the swales about four feet wide uh, so I could kind of follow that rule and you know I can com comfortably reach in towards the center fairly well from here and the other side as well um, whereas before it, it just wasn't as well as good of a use of space and there was quite a bit of space in between the swales too and I kind of shrunk the paths down to about three feet that's really all I need I mean unless unless stuff starts growing out too much <clears throat> all right I've got some more shards down here big one there couple of, I think they're all Swiss shard, Swiss rain, rainbow shard, I haven't seen any of the yellow yet, I've seen like this pink, I've seen some of the red, but evidently they got all kinds of colors, uh, here's a really tall um, radish or rutabaga, you know, I, they look very, very similar, hard for me to tell the difference, alright, let's see here, um, this is a, uh, maybe a little bit morbid, but this is something the cat caught the other day, a little vole or a mole, and uh, nature is quickly, quickly consuming this guy. This was a complete animal yesterday. So that will soon become fodder for the plants. Um, little maple tree here. Or sorry, I believe that one's an oak tree, yes. All right, another swale. Mostly I got a lot of um, mustards and kales over here. Uh, purple beans. Can't wait to see those form. We got little purple flowers on them right now. More corn. Now this corn here is another example of one that was not stable. I've been trying as much as I can to build to build soil up around the edges of it. But if you can see, the roots kind of just shoot straight down off the stock on this guy, where they're supposed to spread out more. And uh, yeah, I'll try and fix it as best as I can. But I don't think that one just took as well. This one was also transplanted in, but it seems to be just a little bit more stable. Um, ah, here we go. First vegetables of the year. I believe will be these guys. Got some little pea pods. Uh, I think this one will end up being the one that will come ready first. You can kind of see through it if you hold it up to the sunlight. Not quite there yet. They'll be really bulging when they're ready. Another sunflower here. Um... <clears throat> Uh, here's some sort of viner. Uh, I don't know what it is. It doesn't look exactly like some of the other squash ones that I have, but 
I also have a few squashes that I've never planted before. This could be one of my melons. I'm not real familiar with what a lot of melon leaves look like. I think they're more round, but I don't know. Now, this to me looks like a melon leaf. I believe my brother was trying to say this looked like a cucumber to him. It's got kind of rounded the bottom leaves on it. I would tend to want to agree with that. And some of these newer ones look kind of jagged. Maybe this is similar. Same family. It is rounded up over this way too. Cucumbers, they're part of the melon family, so they could that could easily be them. Anybody knows, feel free to comment. Um, some more kale. Romaine lettuce. Some of these I've just been picking off of. I had read that with the romaine it's best to let it run up into a head though. So I'm going to try, I've tried to back off on the romaine and just pick on the gentilinas. Uh, some cilantro, there's some other cilantro back over that way but it's quite a bit bigger. Uh, onions, I believe this is another carrot. If anybody sees me misidentifying anything, please feel free to comment. Alright, I kind of closed off, when I built the swales, I kind of closed off this little section here. And when it gets all, it gets real dark back here, and I kind of wanted to give it like a little dark microclimate. See if anything might do well back here. There, are, like this, this uh, broccoli here, it it actually seemed to take its time bolting compared to some of the others that are out in the main sun. But yeah, this was not a good year for broccoli, at least not for me. Um, I believe this is some sort of melon or squash. You know, again, I don't know for sure. Uh, yeah, broccoli, 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 broccoli. Some tomatoes. Now this here, this swale was just kind of a mix of hay and stuff straight out of the chicken coop. And for the longest time, it was getting way too crusty up on the top. And I was thinking it was drying it out too much, maybe too concentrated. So this last week, I took a lot of the the mix I have of 50/50 wood chips and horse manure compost, um, and covered it over and it seems to be doing a lot better it's holding moisture a lot well a lot a lot better it just looks more natural just overall has a better vibe to it i guess <laughs> um over here is i got a little i still haven't seeded this back in with my oats or barley i can't remember which one i had put here i believe it was oats um but the birds just devastate them i just am left with nothing but little empty oat husks all over the surface and very happy birds to have filled their bellies with organic Sayus oats. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got this little bag on a string, so I'm going to get some seeds back out here and see if it doesn't do any better. Um, so far it does actually seem to be keeping the number of the little birds, the little seed-eating birds down. So I, I um, am hopeful for that. Lots of little clovers coming in. These are part of the seeded stuff from the chicken mix I had. This lamb's quarter, I have... Since, come, since finding out that this was edible the other day, I've come to really enjoy this. Actually, it's, right now it's like my favorite green to eat in the garden right now. Really, really good. Ooh, ooh here we go. I've been waiting to see one of these. A uh, little flower. I believe this is on a, a squash or melon or if anybody knows what it is, let me know. Um, oh, yeah, I've been waiting for blooms on those. This is, um, this is exciting for me. Oh, let's see, that little immature corn, squash, doo -doo -doo. Oh, in here, in, in, in amongst the oats, I did throw in uh, onion, uh, some melons, I believe, maybe they were squashes again. Um, okay, this here, I took a little patch and I planted it in with my chicken forage mix, uh, pretty much just to have something to get seed from, so that I'll have seeds of the chicken forage mix to replant next year without having to buy more. I don't know how good that'll work. Um, I'll just have to see. <clears throat> I did a, when I ended up closing off this little area back here, I built, this part was on contour. Right here, I kind of stopped, like, judging contour and just kind of took it to build this path. And I built this back to kind of close this space off. And it really just kind of catches water as it comes down this hill, brings it in through this little channel, which feeds the swale. Kind of the same thing that happens over here. Then they both dump down this way into this swale, which this also catches water, it draws down here, and dumps into this swale. But then when this swale fills up, it dumps back over this way, and then it fills up this big swale. And then when that swale fills up, it dumps over this way, which, as this comes down, also goes over beside this hoogle bed, 
down and off the property. Um, but I also get a lot of water building up right in this area over here. Right where I got that little piece of board sitting so I can step across the fence because it gets mucky. And so I'm actually going to build a ditch this way without a swale and then dump it out that way beside the house where I already have another trench running to take water. Uh, just to take the excess because I don't want any excess water coming up to this basement because this entire hill uh, over this way and off up that way all the way across the block brings all their water right down here and right down that way which uh, I'm going to try and take advantage of with these ditches and swales anyways go um, moving along further here you know you don't see as much growth back here you do where it was more in the shade but here this swale was the same conditions as this other one where it was just the hay mixed with the, the manure which was getting crispy on the surface and drying out and now that I've covered it back over with more of the wood chips and compost, um, it seems to be doing a little bit better. But that's why this one's so much more bare than the others. And this was mostly a uh, Solanaceous um, swale where I tossed it out most of my tomato and pepper and I believe eggplant seeds. And here's a couple of, or a tomato right there. I believe that's a tomato too. Pepper, pepper, tomato. Now that guy, I think, is an eggplant. But, I don't know, I'm not real familiar with eggplant. But, from what I saw online, the, seed, the leaves tend to be somewhere in between what the leaves of a tomato and the leaves of a pepper look like. So like a tomato, but with way smoother and less, uh, um, less serration. Uh, this is another corn, beans, and squash. Here's a melon. Alright, hang on up this way. Now we see the food forest area. Uh, right here at the peak, I got like a little uh, tomato doing really well. Everything's from seed. Nothing's really transplanted in over here. This might be part of the bee flowers. Might be stuff in my, my pollinator mixes. Um, oh, oh, look at this. A couple more oak trees trying to volunteer a position. <laughs> I always watch out for these guys. Um, catch them when they're young and then I don't have to kill them later. I think this is comfrey. Anybody know? Let me know. Not 100%. But this is my support structure for the trees. There's a lot going on here. Um, back here, I believe this is a dill, but it's also got what I believe is brambles stuck to it. Anybody know what that, if that's brambles? I've heard they're edible. But yeah, it sticks to you very very well <laughs> the little uh, little hair like hooks on it I believe um, ooh that smells like fennel actually no that's the dill right there my god that's fragrant <laughs> yeah I could smell that even before I plucked it Okay, this one's uh, another melon. It's starting to kind of run a little bit, so I'm guessing that's an actual melon. Melon, not a um, not a uh, cucumber. I don't think a cucumber vines all that much. More romaine, um, gentilina lettuces. Over here in this food forest area where the soil has not been disturbed at all, except for stuff I layered on top of it, these lettuces seem to do a lot better. Like, I can come and grab and pluck a leaf off of it without worrying about uprooting the entire lettuce plant. And, um, over here in the swales, that's not the case. I kind of have to hold it at the base and pull it, otherwise it will tear it out. It's a really, really loose, loamy soil. Um, I'm not sure which is better, I guess. But I just have to keep experimenting with that. This little uh, Jersey blueberry, I believe it's a northern high bush, does not seem to be doing quite so well. Um, this stem here had actually fallen over. I don't know if that's from like a root rot at the base or if it's just destabilized enough that it wasn't holding in place but it fell over so I kind of popped it, propped it up and trellised it. It actually seems to be getting a little bit greener since I did. Um, but it was kind of sunken deep down in this hole. I've actually uprooted it too and, and put more material underneath it to kind of get it up out of the hole that it was in. And I kind of loosened up some of the soil down from it to kind of trench out of it a little bit so water can just kind of get out if it gets too full in that area. And, uh, I don't know, kind of seems to be limping back from that process, but really I think what I'm going to try and do with this is 
get some cuttings off of it and get it into a few other places and see if um, it doesn't do better somewhere else. Uh, some more kale, I believe. Um, again, anybody who sees me misidentifying something, please let me know. This is actually this doesn't look like the other kales, to tell you the truth. This could be another brassica. This looks kaleish. That definitely looks like a kale. Um, more lamb's quarter. God, that stuff's tasty. Uh, more mustard greens, mustard greens, some other brassicas, and kale. And, oh, there's like a really low um, sunflower, I believe. And I think this is, I have, a, I have a type of sunflower that only grows to two feet tall. And I think that's what that's going to end up being. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I believe this is chamomile right here. Um, if anybody knows what that one is, let me know. I don't believe that's the... No, that's not the dill. The dill's again back here. I don't know if I have any fennel. I can't remember if I had any fennel seeds. Here's some uh, um, asparagus. There's other asparaguses. Just kind of, I kind of put them in a circle around the trees. So there's some, oh, I guess right there with my, uh, uh, broccolis. Let's see here. I believe this guy will end up being an amaranth, but yes, because amaranth is, uh, closely related to lamb's quarter, and this really looks like lamb's quarter, but with a red leaf, so I think that's what that is. Again, we'll see. Not the common plantain. I don't really bother this stuff until it starts to go to seed. And when it starts to go to seed, I'll yank it out. Because that's like the flag that says, okay, pull me. I'm going to become a nuisance. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing on the hoogle bed and over here. And also with the grasses. Like, I'm not really pulling the grasses out unless they become real, really tall or like this one here. If I can see some seeds on it. And then it's like, well, I can get you out of here before you become more of a problem. Okay, that's a full circle on the the uh, first food forest area. Over here, kind of going to build this out a little bit. These rocks right here are for snake habitat because um, it allows the snakes to get in there and stay warm. The rocks will hold heat. Uh, garter snakes are really, really good about keeping slugs under control. So that's why I want them here. I've got this tree that I took down. Actually, the smaller tree, there's a smaller cherry tree connected to an elm, or not elm, um, uh, yeah, maybe it was elm. Anyways, uh, I've got poison ivy growing around it. It was really, really abundant through this tree, through that cherry tree. Like, you couldn't even really distinguish between which leaves belong to the tree and which belong to the poison ivy. I've sprayed all that down with uh, vinegar, and hopefully that will help to get rid of it but it, it does seem to be affecting it but it's not dying off yet but then again it did rain after I sprayed it last all right I've got a few watermelons in here now this would have been where my barley would have been planted but again the birds wiped that out but hopefully this will fix that situation we'll see all right over here was going to be oats barley amaranth and quinoa however the only thing I was able to get established out here so far is the oats and barley, and those are only because I planted them indoors and then transplanted them out uh, in these pots, which I don't like to even use because they'll root bind, them, root bind them and they won't do well. And that seems to actually be the case. They don't seem to be doing too well, but they are they're at least established and started. I do have a few, what I believe are amaranth coming in down here. Um, they were really hard to establish too. The birds really love these things. And so they really want to come in and eat them. I've been thinking about getting just some bird feeders with some better stuff for the birds. Maybe that'll help. This um, uh, grape, uh, Eastern Concord grape, I believe. It was not doing quite super well because it again was getting too wet down here. Too much water was just accumulating. So I dug its roots up and hiked it up a little bit and 
it's actually getting greener leaves now. The greens are, leaves are staying mostly white like they are with this new stuff. It's small. Now they're getting greener, getting a little bit bigger. It seems to be kind of taking off a little bit. Got it up out of the water a little, so hopefully that helps. I've already mentioned in other videos, but I'll trellis it down that way. Trellis a kiwi back the other way. And I just have a nice little backing of fruits as you sit in this little area. All right, this is another little food forest section right here, this whole little uh, rectangle. And it's to basically support this pear tree. I trimmed off a lot of the branches. This is probably way different than a lot of people would do it. And it's kind of struggling along a little bit because um, it sits a little bit low in the water too. But I think it'll actually, I think it'll get its roots where they need to go to be able to get out of the water. I don't think I'll have to do anything to it to fix it. I just need to wait and be patient and let it do its thing and not water this section. <laughs> This is also one of the first corn I planted from seed that I actually took. Doing pretty good. Not as good as that one other one in the swale, but it's doing all right. Uh, here were my um, raspberries that I have overwatered to death. And on this one over here, I think, I think, I think I see a tiny little sprout coming up where it might come back. Evidently, these things are pretty hard to kill. So if I if I killed this, I think that would be quite an accomplishment. So <laughs> I hope I did not. I'd like to see this one come back too. I don't see anything yet. Hopefully, it will. Sunflower. This is actually the biggest and best sunflower. The tallest, doing really well. Um, another little short sunflower next to it. I believe this will end up being one of the two footers. And then another little short sunflower down here. I believe that was also end up being two footer over here just outside the food forest area. Some curly dock. Curly dock, kind of invasive. Pull it up before it goes to seed, and you can use these leaves for green manure just like you can with comfrey or uh, you know any other nutrient accumulator. This uh, this stuff that I believe we identified as sorrel right here and right here and right here you know it's another nutrient accumulator you know even if it's not got any specific benefit um, if you don't like to eat it because evidently it's edible but I don't like it <laughs> um, you know you can use it as a green manure just wait till the leaves get to fairly good size pluck them off and throw them on the ground and you know it'll just be mulch that's growing in place here's another one of those fuzzy leaf things uh, bugs aren't bothering it too bad here's a little beetle of some sort down there if anybody knows what that is um, some kale right here. This leaf's getting like, like it's ready to eat. Ooh, a little radish. This one's not not getting very big. I might end up pulling it if it doesn't get any more any bigger. I think this will end up being a zucchini just because how tightly all the flowerings are on it. And just the spacing of the vines. Uh, more chamomile. Let's see. Some some more broccoli seeds that I'll be able to save here soon. Another sunflower down there, I think. Again, I'm not 100% on these things. So if anybody sees anything I'm misidentifying, let me know. Blackberry, this blackberry isn't doing as good as the other one was. Actually, I don't think I showed you the other one. Because um, it was setting too low. I got it hiked up, dug it up, and put more material underneath it. And it seems to be coming back and doing a little bit better, but it's still not fully recovered. Let me do, do a jump over here real quick and show the other blackberry by comparison. Planted the same height, trimmed the same way, just in a different location. And this guy is going to be forming berries here very soon. Um, at least on that stem. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to those. Here's the hoogle bed. Start over here. You know, there's not a lot of food that's established itself here. I've got my my strawberry plant down here on the end. Um, I've had actually a hell of a time keeping some of the soil covered because into these holes, little ground squirrels have found themselves a little cavern where they can run around and play and have fun. And so this has essentially become their little nest. So if I the cat has a tendency to bring little ground squirrels home, I might 
Well, this might sound a little bit morbid, but I might end up plugging some of those holes with some of the ones my um, cat brings home. And I think that will be the deterrent to get the others out of there. I know if I found a body in my front door, I probably wouldn't go inside. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, here's some, some flowers. I can't remember what they're called, but they're edible. They volunteered. Uh, my potatoes. Blueberry. Garlic, garlic, garlic. I pulled some garlic a little bit early the other day. And uh, evidently you don't have to cure garlic out and, and, and eat it once it's been dried. You can actually eat it fresh, but you just do it differently. Uh, let's see here. There's a few little blueberries. Can't wait to eat those. Um, even though there's only three on the whole plant, but that's my fault because I trimmed the plant back too far. And only second year growth will throw berries, so I... Um, I trimmed off all but the tip of one branch where berries could form. Uh, another strawberry. This was starting to throw fruit out, but evidently that stem died, so now it's not. <laughs> but this one does have runners. It's got runner going all the way over to all the way here, and somewhere at the midpoint. Yeah, there. It flower. It it, it threw out some leaves and rooted down too. On that um, on that runner, and then I think I had another runner. Going up this way, yeah, over to here. So, now I got another strawberry plant up here. It's throwing out. I don't think it's really throwing out anything for runners, and it's not really doing anything for fruit either. So I don't know what that one's doing. <laughs> Gonna have to wait. These garlics are probably not too far away from harvest time. A few of them. <clears throat> Hi, Chicky. This guy over here, uh, I feel sorry for him because he's actually going to be processed today. <sighs> Something I don't look forward to, and I just have a hard time getting around to, so. Oops, I guess real quick here. This is uh, Another little hoogle bed in progress. I'm just kind of slowly th building this one, taking my time. I've got lots of scraps and stuff I'll keep throwing on here, extra dirt and stuff I'll throw on here. And, you know, my intention isn't to get this one ready to plant in this year, but it's just to start building it up for next year. And I want to get it really, really steep, whereas this one, here actually, let me back and show the angle. I got really not a very wide angle. I got about a 45, or a steep angle. I got about a 45 degree angle. It actually makes it quite difficult to reach into the center on this in some points. So it would have been better to go skinnier if I was going to go the same height or taller if I was going to say the same width. Um, and another thing is it's my shoulder height is here and it's down to about there. So your, your shoulder height is actually about where you would want it to be uh, so that you're not you're, you're actually reducing how much you're, you'd be bending over and you can essentially just reach out and grab anything and this extends an effect in permaculture called edge edge is where any two two places meet okay like let's say you got a forest and you got a valley right next to it this is the edge at that edge would be the most diversity now what a hoogle bed does is it is takes that edge and stretches it vertically so you've got edge all the way up rather than just this little section right down here so that is the main effect from hoogle culture aka hill culture which actually in reality is just the german word for raised beds but for us here in the united states has taken on an entirely new meaning all right that video was kind of long, <laughs> sorry about that, but anyways, um, again, Robert Overture for Iowa Urban Permaculture, just doing another video showing my progress, and I appreciate everybody watching and following and contributing information, and um, thanks, bye.